And Baylor, how do you like the sound of this? 40 and 0. The Lady Bears are the national champs in 2012. 26 points, 13 rebounds for Brittany Griner. Baylor wins the national championship. Baylor finishes a perfect 40 and 0. Here's Chris Conley. Perfection. How can any basketball team ever hope to achieve it? When every missed shot, every basket on the other end, every whistle from a ref and every rebuke from a coach marks a kind of failure. Perhaps for the best teams, one season's many mistakes aren't modes of behavior, but motivation, spurs to success, and the singular stature that comes from having earned one of sport's most honored adjectives, undefeated. You don't think about, wow, I think we could go undefeated this year. You really just caught in that moment right there, and, and you know you got something going that's pretty, pretty special. Yes, it's all about winning championships, but to go undefeated in any sport, no slips, no shrugs, no nights taken off, still confers an additional, much desired distinction, button-busting pride in the present and an honored legacy in the future. There are many ways to run the table, around a team, a scheme, or a superstar. Think of Cam Newton's quicksilver skills at Auburn in 2010, Urban Meyer's cutting edge offense at Utah in 2004, the camaraderie it took for UConn to take down Tennessee in 1995. UConn has won the national championship, and they've done it in perfect fashion. Contrasts are easy to find from the 1992 Dream Team's array of eye-poppingly epic talent to Bob Knight's 1976 Indiana squad, the epitome of team-first excellence. The day before practice started in 76, we had a team meeting, and I told them then that the only completely satisfactory uh, ending to this upcoming season, the 75-76 season, would be if they went undefeated. It wasn't winning the Big Ten, it wasn't winning the national championship, it was just simply not losing a game. What suits your style? The game's most dominant offensive force? Thierry Henry for Arsenal's Invincibles in 2004. No-name defense, Don Shula's 1972 Miami Dolphins. What just happened? That we went undefeated. But the whole objective was not to go undefeated, the whole objective was to win the Super Bowl. Greatness sustained by coaching. John Wooden's UCLA teams had four undefeated seasons, the same number that Gino Ariema's Huskies have also earned. The goal is every day to play the perfect game. That's the way I would take it. Oh, and the other thing that maybe those guys will admit, they all had the best players, <laughs> including me. Since the year 2000, 13 different FBS schools have finished a season unbeaten, products of everything from loud leaders to soft schedules. Yet it's been nearly four decades without an undefeated team in the NFL, or any franchise approaching a season-long and O oh, gets a wallop of scrutiny, speculation, and pressure, as the Colts, the Packers, and the Patriots have discovered while falling just short. But if an undefeated season shuts every doubter's mouth, losing that last game brings a summit to plummet pain, and even a season's worth of highlights can not assuage. We finally did it. Unfinished business was over, and uh, I was just just ready to just be with my team and just hug them all. Here's a tweet from Robert Griffin III. He's a bear. National champs 40-0, Heisman Alamo Bowl champs, and 10 wins, two AP Players of the Year, Elite Eight for boys equals best sports year in Baylor history. Sick him.